Greetings from a very snowy, chilly, negative seven degrees, Kansas City. You are listening to and watching The AV Life. Merry Christmas from San Jose, California. This is Nancy Blanchard with Williams AV. And today you are watching and listening to The AV Life. James King here, writer for the Higher Ed Digital Magazine, IT and AV column. Uh, I have my board member as a programmer co-host. Again, Google me, you'll find me. And you are watching and listening to The AV Life. And I'm your host on this very special holiday edition. Uh, I, my name is Tim Van Wert, and you are watching and listening to The AV Life. Yeah, I almost forgot to introduce myself there. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah. Geez, we took one week off, and I, like, forgot how to do things. Um, yeah, that's just been life this year. So, um, so yes, welcome to our uh, holiday edition. Uh, if you are watching us on YouTube, you are seeing that we are all decked out and ready to go for our holidays, uh, wherever they may be uh, across the country. And uh, I will uh, introduce, just get the ball rolling today. We're going to introduce our guests so we don't uh, waste any time uh, without them a tag coming along on this ride. Uh, I'm going to go to our, our lady guest uh, at the bottom of my screen here, the ever popular and the infamous Michelle Lorette. How are you today, Michelle? I am wonderful, Tim. Thanks for having me on, guys. It's always nice to see y'all, especially around the holidays. Yes, yeah, so always a pleasure to have you here on the <laughs> AV Life and, a, and for all these years as well, too. So we always thank you having you around. So much appreciated. Like an old uh, and, yeah, thanks right. for not she kicking me to the curve. Her. <laughs> yeah. no we need we need we need to keep you around michelle we're not doing that so i'm, I'm available for recycling guys that's what i'm here <laughs> for <laughs> all right right above at least for my screens right above uh, michelle is uh our ever popular ryan gray who seems to have really been making a name for himself over these last couple of weeks yeah. on the twitterverse and uh, higher ed ev.com as well how are you doing tonight ryan Doing wonderful, Tim. Thank you for having me. Long time listener, first time guest. So I can't, I, I, I can't resist doing this. So, all right, you ready? My name is Ryan Gray, Assistant Director of IT at Yavapai College, contributor to Higher Ed AV, board member of HETMA, and you are watching and listening to the AV Live. <laughs> I was, I, that was awesome, Ryan. Well done. Well done. I'm I was waiting to that do that. Done. that. Ryan, Ryan, what, Ryan. What, what city and state are you in? So I'm in Prescott, Arizona, northern Arizona. Think pine trees, not desert. Is that how you say it? I always thought it was Prescott. Ah, it's Prescott. spelled Prescott. So if you're from not here, you say Prescott, and that's how we know you're from. You're an <laughs> yeah, outsider. Okay, that's yeah. good. The no, we're music. the best part of Prescott. Like four seasons. It's beautiful. Nice. It's nice and cool. It's going to be 65 on Christmas. So, so you know, uh, Ryan, like do I'm you playing have any... golf. Delete him like... right now. Delete him. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, Ryan, tell tell us, do you have any openings? <laughs> we'll get hiring? to that. Yeah. I'm just saying <laughs> yeah. it's a great place to be and uh, shameless plugs are coming. One yeah, James, there. James, uh, James definitely beat me to that. I was, I was like, oh, let me, let me get that, let me get that uh, segue in there. And yeah, you're too quick, James. <laughs> Sorry. One more well, guess. That's okay. Yeah. Well, welcome, welcome aboard, Ryan. And yeah, thank you. When Ryan and I were messaging, when he said he wanted to jump in, he was like, um, I'm going to need that AV life background too. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Play your role. Yeah, uh -huh. I didn't know. I just I wanted I know, to fit in. Regular, I wanted to fit in. I, I, yeah, yeah, you're a friend of the cast, Ryan. Okay, <laughs> you're not a cast member. That's housewife rule. Okay? I didn't know. I know you're excited. I, 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 as you should be. You should be excited to be joining us uh, here. So, <laughs> I think Tim, though, you're a little nervous, right? He just took over and did a sly opening. He pulled it. No, it's okay. Uh, no, no, I'm no, just trying no, to be no. like you guys. I want to be. Oh, never mind. All right. We have we have our first like you know fan like you know like he's actually like fanning out. Of, what's, what's he's a fan man. He's a fanboy. It's like <laughs> I told him he was a man. I said he was a fan man. Fan I was trying fan out man. of respect. It makes fan sense. Fan man sounds like somebody that's gonna like fan you while you're sitting. There's the alliteration. We like that too. And feed us grapes. Yes, with palm fronds. Yes, not a bad idea. Uh oh, James got hit in the face with a, uh, with a snowball. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> no, that's true. That is true. And last but certainly not least, uh, Mr. Mike Peterson. 
how are you, sir? I'm well, you know, we're hanging in there. We have the holiday edition of COVID in our house. So Oh my uh, gosh. Yeah, so that that's not super fun. Uh and meanwhile, you know, it's uh blizzard warning uh and minus 37 wind chill outside here oh. right now. So yeah, I'm I'm happy, thankful for uh, a warm house and heat. So absolutely. But I'm the audiovisual experience manager at Iowa State University, and I've also recently formed a little side gig called Analytical Audiovisual LLC to do consulting that. on the side. Yes. I love that. Mm-hmm. That's a great yes, idea. We are very excited for you, Mike, and wish you the best of luck with that venture you. of yours. So that's, uh, yeah, well, I know you had reached out to some of us uh, early on uh, in this, the uh, the brainstorming stages, yes. you know, so we've, we've all been very highly anticipating this uh, this <laughs> moment, so so yes, if you're looking for some uh, uh, consulting in the AV world on the side gig, reach out to to Mike and uh, you know. Well, and Mike, I want I'm sure you do because you're in education. But write down copious notes that way when you pull a Joe away and produce your ebook about how to start an <laughs> AV consultancy, you can go ahead and monetize the journey um, and know? get some uh, recurring revenue off That's, of uh, books, ebook sales. That's brilliant, actually. Oh. So we have a we guest. Have fr- we have, yeah, we have a, we have a little guest. Say hi. 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 Oh. Oh. Hear you. I am. I am. Hi. 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 I love little people. <laughs> How cute. Oh. As yeah, as always, the small children and animals are always welcome here on the AV Life. So always nice to have a little guest on on with us. Um, so it is still December. Uh, we are we are closing out. I don't know how we're doing this already, but we're closing out 2022. Um, I, I was having a discussion with my dad uh, a couple of weeks ago, and you know, I was saying like how fast like the soccer season went and things like that, and. And he goes, Tim, you know, as you get older, these, those days turn into years and they fly super fa- fast. And I was like, yeah, you're right. It's like, my, my son is about to turn eight tomorrow. Like we're, we're recording on the 22nd. He's turning eight tomorrow. I was like, how do I have an eight year old already? And it's like, <laughs> I know it's that's you know, crazy. And, and, and like the, he's basically only known the people I work with at Rutgers like when I was still at Fairleigh Dickinson, he was just a baby. And then I switched over to, to Rutgers. So my entire, his entire life has just revolved around my crew at Rutgers. So it's, it's kind of funny. Is his entire wardrobe in Rutgers school colors? Uh, between Rutgers and uh, New Jersey Devils and maybe Blue yeah. Yankees. And nice. yeah, so it's, yeah, he's got all the colors. Themed. And- <laughs> And all the teams, yeah. Although it is easy being a Rutgers fan and an NJ uh, Devils fan because it's all black and red. So um, it's perfect. There's a lot of, there's, a, you open up that drawer and it's a lot of black and red in there. So, and then <laughs> navy blue. Yes. <laughs> oh, and excuse me, black and black and yellow for the Steelers. I would be amiss without bringing oh, that up. So, no, it certainly yeah. isn't for the Hawkeyes, right, Mike? <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Hawkeyes, wrong team. Cyclones. That's the other eye. That's that's the, yeah. the, that's that's the dreaded enemy team. You know, our our uh no Hawkeyes. Yuck. Red and gold. That's that's Chiefs colors. Red and gold. So I'll stick with yep. red and gold. Cyclones. <laughs> there you go. So um so as we as we wrap up uh, December um we uh we have I'm sure we have all had our wish lists for this last year. Um, what are some of your like last wishes for this year going into 2023 it could be technical it could be personal um i think we all we all agree that as an av family we want to keep growing as we're we're as we've been doing and getting back to those things of normal so let's think outside of that that realm so uh anybody want to before i start picking on somebody in the class does somebody want to <laughs> lead us off well, well, I I'll could go. say, I oh, okay, go ahead, Renee. Um, I just noticed this here in the last few months, but I was like, next year I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a resolution, which I always have a resolution, but by yeah, that girl who's gonna go to the gym and on January seventh, I'm all done doing that. But um, I really felt like 
when when everything picked back up, which I feel like COVID's been over for a minute as far as events, but when everything picked back up, all of a sudden everybody did all their events at once, and we yeah. were doing event, event, event. And next thing you know, I'm working on Saturdays, I'm working on Sundays, I'm I'm up at midnight. I'm, I got a call the other day from one of my customers who said, "Why are you emailing me at 1:15 in the morning?" I'm like, well, because my husband's asleep and the house is quiet and no phones are ringing and I can get through my emails, but that has to stop because I'm <laughs> draining myself. So yeah. that has to stop. I have to start going, okay, I'm not that eight to five, but I have to go, okay, if I'm going to work a little bit over, it's going to be a little bit over and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to have to have a hard stop. And that's going to be really hard for me to do. Yeah. So check with me on February 1st and see if I'm still doing that. But um, the work-life balance it's a real thing and it's, mm -hmm. it can overwhelm you. And so I drink a lot of wine. I'm trying to drink less wine. In 2020. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's my, the work-life balance piece of it that I think that, you know, COVID just destroyed yeah. because you could work every second. Cause all you had to do is walk into the other room to work. Right. And mm -hmm. it didn't really go away when everything picked back up and you're on the road four days and then you got to take three days to get caught back up. And so I think well, that's and mine. that expectation that you're always going to be on is like a little annoying. And, you know, I always try to avail myself as a resource because we have physical branches, right? Brick and mortar. And bless his heart. I had one of the inside guys at the branch today and he was like, uh, can you check on, you know, this PO, uh, you know, when it's expected to ship? And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. I'm a salesperson. Do I, you know, and I do plenty of like CSR stuff all day long, but they literally think I'm still sitting in my house all day. I'm like, I am out in the field. And don't yeah. you already know how to do this? Why are you asking me? I didn't put that part down because it's teams and it lives forever. But I did put <laughs> like, here's the contact for DNH. They can let you know about the Samsung. Thanks. You know, like, uh, dude, I'm not sitting at a keyboard. I'm not near a computer door. Well, my phone is a computer, but nonetheless, y'all get my point. So, mm. but yeah, no, I totally am with you on that. Um, it did that to us though. Like, cause I literally like, well, okay, dinner's done. We're just watching a movie. I'll just walk back into my office and answer that email, you know? So it made it easy. Mm -hmm. You weren't going anywhere either, right? right so, exactly. Yeah. No. I wasn't at a show this week, so okay, I'll go. You know. So I just now that it's picked back up and back to a crazier than what I feel like before COVID was with events. I like okay, mm -hmm. time to draw. Or I'm going to have. Yeah. We got to Yeah, we got to make sure we keep those ba those boundaries up and. So, so you're not, gonna, you're not you're not going to pull a Joe away and go to like 54 conferences in a year Hold i on. thought joe okay. was trying to give himself a heart attack or... no, no, no all right i'm gonna give you a little glimpse behind the curtain okay one of the things joe went to was okay. crush on masters or he went to the work summit associated with it and in okay. the same facility at the same time was like the florida state k-12 conference of some type so he went over there oh so now he's God, taking he's over k-12 he's gonna be mad at <laughs> like me it. no no no. he had a meeting with a vendor and then he counted that as one he had been to uh -huh. so now he's gonna be mad at me for out of so if he says 54 <laughs> make him account for all of them first is all well I'm at least he can't fire you because you're on the board so i think i think you're protected i think you're good yeah, that's all right. It takes it takes it takes a uh, a quorum of us to and you know there needs to be a vote. It, like he, he can't just tell him to go away. So we yeah, don't rule out that. that I still won't do something that gets a quorum of the board to you know <laughs> kick me off. That's still a possibility. I mean, he is a Mets fan. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Well, I mean, in fairness, I, mean, yeah, I, 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 I forget. I forget that because you're not here, Ryan. But that the, you know. So, but there, there, you know, the I, awkward part. I've never set foot in New York in my life and really? i'm a mets fan it's not a great story it's not but it's true how did that happen it's not it really the answer is my dad and my family st louis cardinals fans for years yeah. and in a small moment of teenage rebellion in the late <laughs> 80s when they were rivals i think i just said it and it stuck and you were like how it i like the mets i'm gonna wear your bow jeans I drink yeah. Zima. You can't tell me what to do. You're not the so then, Ryan. It's the late to... 80s. <laughs> so then, Ryan, this next yeah. summer, uh -huh. they, if they have the AVIT Summit at City Field, you I need to do... come out for that. 
if I had no, so I didn't, yeah, exactly. I didn't oh, see that ahead of time. Great. It was like, there's an event at, I would be the last, there in a heartbeat. Tw- the last two that they've had in person were there. It was I this know. year and then 20, I guess that would have been 2019. It was, and we got like behind the scenes tours of the, the like stadium and stuff like right that. There. That's always so much fun. Yeah. Tim, don't let me miss it. Do not let I, me miss that. As soon like, as I, I will see be it. there. Can't give us some insight. What did the AV look like? Was it clean? Was it a hot mess? Oh was no, it was legacy? very clean. Was it state of the art? There were, so there was a little. There was a little bit of legacy because of a lot course. of the I think the broadcast equipment is still like there. There's not really much change. There is change. Mm-hmm. So people on broadcast, I'm sorry, I don't mean it like this. No. but there's not a lot of change. So like some from, broadcast still has to support 480, y'all. I mean, you know, it's like so. They, yeah, they have to be ready. For, they have to be ready for generations. Of, right. Yeah. Um, but no, like the AV was beautiful. Uh, the, the 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 stadium itself is very very clean and like, in general. Um, you, like, I love. I love. I'm sorry, Yankee I don't mean to interrupt. But okay. yeah, like if you look up, the Mets did a uh, like a five year partnership with Samsung to put Nine. in. They put in something, however many acres of video LED, boards across yeah. the thing yeah. and mm-hmm. i'm getting pictures right now of two new giant direct view leds that are going in the outfield like they're not going to need lights for night games because uh-huh. the outfield <laughs> boards are going to be l- bright enough to do it oh and they're and they're <laughs> only dialed up to 30 percent. that's what's also fascinating right, exactly. right? they're yeah. not even at 100 percent, right. or your eyes would bleed yeah yeah, um, it's interesting because so- Samsung can do that, right? You know, because most stadiums, but in Houston, it's this weird Harris County Sports Authority yeah. at, mm-hmm. with the rodeo. And so it's quasi private, public, blah, blah, blah. Yes, they don't do anything. You know, like the NFL can tell, you know, Jerry Jones, like, hey, you have to do this for the Cowboys. The minute they try to tell the Texans to do anything, our ownership's like, oh, it has to go before the county. Sorry, it's <laughs> not up to us. And then the, honestly, the rodeo pays for it. So yeah, it's just fascinating. It, I know. What, what, it's all about the mark. When I worked that time, we were trying to do work down there, and it was so confusing as to, who owns the money right you know one of the first thing you you try and do as a salesperson is figure out who owns the money and it was terribly hard to understand it's impossible well because the smg is running it right so you've got the dave grundy's yeah you have smg running it you've got three different mistresses that all have ownership like three ex-wives you know love hate stuff (laughs) um it is interesting and that's funny because i used to call uh the athletics departments at universities like you know that's the boardroom of the university Mm -hmm. they'll always have the money that's where you get to do the fun stuff and like higher ed uh, Mm -hmm. which is why i've always kind of gravitated towards that group um because you ask you know the ag group and they're like we're gonna budget for 2025 and you know you ask (laughs) athletics and they're like can we have that done yesterday no not mm-hmm. possible to go back in time okay well then how about by tomorrow you're like well not then either but yeah they always <laughs> have the funding it's it's fascinating all uh, right so yeah it's it's uh well i was gonna what i was gonna say was that um city field is is beautiful i love yankee stadium don't get me wrong like that's that's my cathedral that's my cathedral to baseball because that's uh-huh. what it is it is the enormous current one is. or the previous one the current one the current one is the mm-hmm. cathedral the other i so i have a lot of memories in the old yankee stadium the other one's the I chapel them, right that was the chapel this is the cathedral so you know you know the house that george you, know, you had the house that ruth built the house that george built and now you have this one and it's like you know um but uh I have a lot of memories in the original, but in the well, not the original Yankee Stadium, but the, but that one yeah. there. Uh, but City Field is very homey, and that's what I like. That's what I like about it is that it is. It's it's not because we have a lot of minor league stadiums here in New Jersey, and it's not a minor league stadium by any measure. But right. it has that feeling of small baseball boutique. Like, yeah and it's it's very yeah in a, in a major league way so right. it's you know it's that's and i'm not trying to downplay it's still a major league stadium but yeah like it has that family atmosphere mm. you know and, and it was designed and to be ticket that prices are more yeah <laughs> but 
I would say it's designed to be that, right? It's from that era right. of stadiums. It's not supposed yes. to be huge. And it's got the front, mm-hmm. you know, facade that's supposed to look like Ebbets Field. And it's Correct. trying to call yep. back to that sort of thing. And mm-hmm. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Another, yeah. you, they still, I'm they, a fan. They still have... They still have the, you, the markers for home plate from uh, uh, Jay cool. Stadium. Jay, I'm gonna, yeah, so. Jay. One day yeah. I'm going to have a picture. I'm going to lay down in the parking lot next to that. I will <laughs> take, take my picture, picture there for where, you. You know, the, another good stadium that it's very like to me, it brings out the sport and less of the, you know, you're in stadium is actually the Philadelphia Union Stadium. Uh huh. Mm. Tell us that it. It, it's a major league soccer stadium. I was there watching Corey Lloyd's farewell game because that was actually near her hometown. And I'll admit the only thing that kind of annoyed me, but it wasn't a big deal, was they did have a jumbotron, but it was behind me in my seat. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted to see anything on the jumbotron, yeah. you had to turn around and look. Uh-huh. But it had a beautiful view over over the water. And you felt like you were on the field. Uh, that's like, cool. it, that how felt uh, yeah. close you felt. It was a really good stadium and well lit, easy to get to. Like I said, probably one of the best stadiums I've been in. Were you that's living your really best cool. life during the World uh, World Cup series that were going on, James? I wish I saw more of it. I, yeah. I my time it did, didn't allow me to it really line watch up. as many game um, as I wanted. I did see some good games. Um, Who are you yeah, rooting I, for? really to tell you the truth i'm kind of glad our argentina won i would yeah. love i would have loved to see the u.s men go further yeah um, mainly because we need a change in soccer in the united states and mm-hmm. that would have helped because right now yeah. if you i both i saw this throughout when i ran the club in new jersey whenever the u.s women's team did well in the olympics or in the yep. um World Cup, we saw a spike in youth uh, female soccer players. Mm. And right now, there's, I, I would say, there's a low in kids playing sports. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing I'm also hearing is there's a lot of talks. I don't know, you know, how they're getting away with it, but parents are actually holding on purpose, holding their kids back two mm-hmm. years so they have Very an much. advantage in school sports. Really? Yep. Yep. Oh yeah. Yep. Because there are ranges, right? It's of... nuts. That's yep. crazy. That is crazy. I, I never, I haven't actually even heard that yet. So. I neither. Yep. Yeah, but think about this. Like when we were growing up, some of us, uh, you know, we didn't have seat belts. We rode in the back of the pickup truck. Um, mm-hmm. Everybody thought, oh, 18, you're grown up. And we now know that, you know, which explains a lot of our great decision making in our early 20s. <laughs> we now know that the brain is not developed until we're about 25. So in some ways, it might not be a bad thing. And I think also because we are a very prosperous industrial nation, um, you know, we delay things more now, right? I mean, my mom had me when she was 19 years old, you know, and now people have children when they're 30, my girlfriend at 39, uh, you know? Mm -hmm. So, oh yeah, I know, crazy. I I don't go off on a tangent, but I actually think that whole thing where you're talking about where as a society, we're delaying things is killing society. Do you? Tell me more. Because I I feel Mm -hmm. you look at the adults, and they're acting like children. They're well, yeah. still watching cartoons. I mean, yeah, their oh, cartoons are good to watch. Gaming. They're acting like, like game. Hey, some well, of my favorite engineers who shall remain nameless. I mean, yeah, they, they mean, game copiously. And they're in their 50s. It. Yeah, nothing wrong with doing all that. But it's the problem is, I think, as a society, it's really, you know, we, we're not growing up. And yeah. that's the mm-hmm. problem. People are throwing mm-hmm. tantrums. And oh, yeah. you know, oh, you don't believe me? I yeah, you know, like there's no, we're not growing up, and that's a problem. And I get off my soapbox now. <laughs> which is funny, yeah, which is funny because we came from we we like we like my generation came from the I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid, but yet that's we, right. we did grow. But yet we did grow up. We so, did right. have a choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know what? Like with today, I was just telling somebody this. I don't know what's happening to society, but it's a society that believes that. I, I deserve whatever. I'm going to take it. I'm going to walk yeah. into the store. I'm going to take something. Nobody's going to stop me. Doesn't matter. Yeah. And we've, we've really, 
gone away from, I don't know, respect and knowing, you know, like what, what the rules are and what the laws are. Nobody cares anymore. It's all thrown out. Oh, I've been watching a lot of the A&E series. Thank God for video, y'all. Has that not just <laughs> transformed the world? So I watch like, you know, car wars, like what if road rage wars, neighborhood neighbor wars, you know, retail wars, where it's just, Nancy, to your point, it's just people acting so poorly and ridiculously that you're like, what are you doing? I saw one girl, she watched a lady uh, take a shovel because she had parked on the street, which is, as we know, we're all allowed to park on the streets. Free country, y'all. Um, and the lady was just screaming and took a shovel and just totally battered her car mm -hmm. because she insisted that she was parked in her boyfriend's place in front of the house. <laughs> but this wasn't like, you know, um, tight, like downtown row house, Philadelphia. This was mm -hmm. like a suburban neighborhood where they have a big, long driveway where you can park three cars. And I'm like, what is wrong with people? But you watch it. Well, I watch it to make myself feel better and go, I would never do that. Uh, you know, that's ridiculous. You know, damage ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I don't know if in your areas, but I get everyday notifications of packages that are stolen off of in broad daylight. Oh yeah. And and right. they're saying the only reason we go on next door to see whose packages got stole that right. day. Right? Well, that's the thing. Like, I, I've never realized <laughs> with it, the ring doorbell me, video. My ring doorbell has made me like, uh, I don't know if I. I, I if you're I, a voyeur now, I lost, Tim. If I lost respect in society or not, <laughs> because like it's all about lost dogs, uh, stolen yep. packages, yeah, and stolen and stolen candy. That bothered me at Halloween. It's yeah. Like, oh, these kids took my whole bowl of candy. I'm like, yeah, we've been doing that for 40 plus years. Well, Come that's on. true, like, right? It's like you if you just hand it out, you just never saw it. That's you the best have reward scenario. I, th I got one to one that. Oh, the yeah. weirdest one, uh, and still baffles my mind. I need to ask someone who actually truly lives, uh, like grew up in Vegas, because this makes no sense. But I see all the time on neighborhood and the ring app and social media my shoes were stolen why the hell are people keeping their shoes outside oh well, i know i know that asians like, and indians do i know i can because here in my neighborhood yeah. there's some there's there's some cultural thing about not bringing your shoes into the house okay maybe that's it i i again i don't i just see what these people are posting so i don't know their religious or right. culture or anything it just to me it's like why the hell are your shoes outside? You're like, come on. Yeah. You know what? Funny enough, the the next door neighbors, they have like a little shelf outside their front door and they've got all their shoes on there. Just oh. saying, if anyone's interested in go living somewhere where your stuff doesn't get stolen, you could leave your shoes out front. It doesn't matter. May I recommend Northern Arizona? Prescott, Arizona <laughs> is a very nice place to be. And how would how would one find themselves out there, Ryan? I don't know. You might take a look and say you're interested in leading an in-house integration department. You might want to be the <laughs> oh, integration so manager. Holy the integration God. manager. So Service Ryan. and support manager. Let's say you want to build a career. Like I, I realize like people give me a hard time because I'm on the I'm on the hustle on some of these positions, but like you know, I moved here 10 years ago. I took a pay cut to do it. It's been the best decision I ever made in my life. It's led to way more career advancement than I ever would have had. And talking about work-life balance, a work-life balance that's been awesome. So, you know, wow. I, so I, Ryan, I like, yes, please. Let me ask you this. Is that your Christmas wish list? <laughs> well, if you uh, yeah. would uh, consult would you... your article on higheredaving.com this year. <laughs> Three all, filled, you know, vacancies. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, yeah, a hundred percent it is, but there's a reason for that. Right. Which is, you know, I've got a team that has, we're trying to build a common mission to take care of the students that happen to be in our area. And, and I've said this before, just cause you know, you may be at Yavapai college in Northern Arizona. I don't think you deserve any less of a technology experience as a student, as someone who is at a mm -hmm. research one institution and there's opportunities to make that stuff happen. You know, we, we may not be the biggest, but my goal is to make the best team in higher ed AV. And, and I'm not joking about that. So that's a great wish list. 
the day you throw down the Carolina, gauntlet with you Joe know, a. I'm going to have the best team. You're going to. So, you know I'm going to have the best. Ryan, team. He, he's got. You've got the passion. That's yeah. the whole thing. You've got sure. the passion, and you can see it when you're talking. So well, I appreciate so I, that. I have, like, I have the best team right now. So if if you're looking for who to compete with. You know, yeah, exactly. Right, right. Well, and right. then you know, you could you could steal people from Joe Way too. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might be don't think I haven't tried. Don't think I. Are we trying the other to get thing. on Joe Way's naughty list? Like, well, I've already we, I've already thrown shade at him once. So I could do it again. Every yeah. time I see Will, because I've seen him a couple times this year, I go, Will, are you okay? Blink once for yes, two for no. <laughs> well, I was gonna say this: the, the the Carolina boy went to the big city of L.A. Like, yeah, you know, I, I'm so worried. I've been so worried. I, he seems to be doing great, but I'm like, he's yeah, great. Yeah, if he you is, can't speak freely, you can tell me it's okay. Yeah, so Link. Link. you really want to get Joe you get on Joe's bad side. Will's great. You have to get Chi. Yeah, yeah, but Chi, favorite dude, I, he is. But Chi, you know, like he's a rock I'm, star. He is, but I'm real about it. Like, you know, you're gonna come to a semi-rural county in Arizona and do that. It's right. not what it is. So come on, you're well, not selling yeah, it. Chi right. needs. You're not selling it. She's big in his church, right? So he wants yeah. his church community there and stuff. And I think a major metropolitan area. And she, for the record, if we don't all remember, he predates Joe. He was there before Joe. I'm just mm -hmm. saying. So he was, I won't say BJ because that sounds really wildly inappropriate, but he was before yeah. Joe. Yeah, um, but the, the cool part about it is, right? Like Chi and Raj and Will and the team there, like Raj is helping us through our 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 uh, implementation of VC4, like oh, they're nice. still oh. part of the team yeah. because mm -hmm. of the community that's built right. around what we do. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, you yeah. know, anyways, I'm just saying. Consider Love it. Well, I will say so, while we're talking about back to talking about that sort of stuff um, on my, my wish list personally, yeah. um, I uh, would love to, I actually, I actually have it on my wish list on Amazon. Is a uh, one of those uh, Elegato stream decks. Uh -huh. uh, the little, I just want the little eight min, the mini one. I just want the eight, that 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 one. Yeah, that <laughs> the little six button. That's all I need. What is it? <laughs> so I'm hoping what is it? it's a the programmable. Uh, yeah, the stream deck. It's a it's a programmable uh, controller, for lack of a better. It you know oh. so. So like I can, really, I can pro go ahead. You explain yeah. since you've, you've been, using I, I can't explain it as great as some other people, folks could, but really it came out for streamers, gamers there. You can create a lot of macro buttons on it. For example, like I have it set a profile. So when I'm in zoom calls, I have very easy buttons where I can mute um, the mic, mute the camera and also take a screenshot which would make, uh, you know, Murphy's job easier because oh. he's always looking for those keyboard commands. And you could do a lot of other things like that. You can really tie into OBS, like Michael mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a, Michael. a lot of functionality, <laughs> and I'm just hitting the surface with it, what I can do with it. Okay. okay. So, yeah, so there's that. And I want an AV over IP solution that is not a ending in Ron that I can, <laughs> that now I can you're get. asking way too much, Tim. Way well, too much. I, I'm, I'm about to demo an, a one from another uh, mm -hmm. vendor and I'm not gonna say who yet. So- okay. um, What are you looking uh, for, encoders and decoders? Both, yeah. Oh, okay. Look at blue stream. No, just encoders. He's good with just encoders. We don't want to see that. That's all we need. Just let it stay in that category cable and not go anywhere. Yeah, as long as um, we get it on the network, that's all that matters. We're fine. Our job no, is done. Our, our job the is network done. Guys will figure it out from there. It's I'm the preventer yeah, problem at that problem, point. Right? Yeah, that's AV on IP. That's all that we're asking. <laughs> AV on IP, exactly. <laughs> uh, but Tim, I would take a look at blue stream uh, blue because stream? I ran into yeah. some issues, not with the Trons. Um, although their stuff wasn't available, but with another manufacturer and they couldn't give me lead times. And uh, I was able to save them close to a quarter million dollars, rock solid product. Um, mm -hmm. They air freighted the balance of the 450 pairs of encoders and decoders that they needed from mm -hmm. Australia at their cost. Um, and uh, they're just really good people. And they oh, were white labeled. Of... They were white labeled for somebody else here in the U.S. And that contract uh, went up. And because they were planning that in 2019, knowing the contract was going to be up in 2020, they have plenty of Dante chipsets. Blah, 
who knew? So yeah. yeah. But I'm always on the lookout, like yourself, you know, because people can only well, that's, wait. And that's so the thing, long. like I've we've always stood by like we have our standards, but yeah. at the same time, like I am not bound to anybody at any time. I will if it's if there's another solution out there that's cheaper but gonna work better and fill my needs, I'm gonna move on. Like it's yeah. unfortunately I that's been, the way Tim, yeah, I have been told by... too, standards was like what standard? Well, yeah. yeah. Speaking of standards, yeah, um, that's on my holiday wish list. And if y'all go to my, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we can we can take that. We'll take that segue. Go I like it. If, I like if, you go, we... if you go if you go to my uh, uh, higher ed AV article, you can read more about this. But you know, on my wish list is a uh, universal AV over IP standard that everyone just accepts in the oh, pro av world that's any device works with any other device and all the switch manufacturers support yeah. it and it's 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 put out there by one of the you know one or more of the well-established standards got a tear in my, got a tear yeah in but my i eye. want world peace and uh you know I, free ice cream for everybody well, and i think i've got a shot get of it before the, you, you do mike no no, I, no I, i'm pretty sure if we get this world peace will follow right so really we should be <laughs> exactly. pushing for this world peace or world peace world peace yeah. world, world peace world yeah i'm a boyton yeah. girl so yeah that's no that we i follow I, the money second. there's no money yes there, mike. mike we want that it would be nice, but getting people on the same page. I mean, we can't when they even get can't, that, we yeah. can't even get that with HD base T right now. I know. Like yeah, you, right. Well, yeah, that's like category cable, right? Category was where they <laughs> well, kind of all were on the same page. But then when they even, realized that that interoperability within the category world um, kind of led to a race to the bottom, it's the reason why back in ye olden days, um, we ended up with like 15 different types of fiber connectors. So I know a lot of people out there don't remember MTRJ, but it existed. Sorry, Panduit. Um, obviously, Larry <laughs> Charlie's, that came from the legacy AT&T Bells. Uh, your Sam Tom Sam Charlie's from what at the time was Secor and later became Corning. But it was the reason we ended up with a gazillion types of fiber connectors is because we couldn't get anybody on those at the time, EIA, TIA, standards committees to agree to agree again they were like nope <laughs> not gonna do it and we're not doing it for 6a either right so yeah and that's why i don't think we'll i think we'll always live in a world of av pseudo standards i don't know can it show I mean, of hands who thinks we'll live in the world I, wh who's gonna solve this problem well it's, none, we none solve of that with the simple of cables like michelle was saying like the fiber ones, yeah, we had a lot of connectors out there, but we do have the category cables. So the from the Cat Three all the way up to Cat yep. Eight is now it's yep. all RJ forty five. The pairs are all the same. Take a XLR; they're all different. Mm -hmm. It doesn't oh, matter which point. one you get; they're all but, wired different. They're all different colors inside. Uh -huh. and it, but with Dante, a, yep. But with Dante, it's a network mm -hmm. connection, and that standardizes that. Yep. It's not so, so it doesn't matter, but the answer is if if AV people don't standardize this and do it, mm -hmm. then the IT industry will and mm -hmm. will play on their team, yeah, will absolutely. play on their terms. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and how this needs to happen is you need to get about a dozen small companies to all get together and agree to yeah. make all their devices with an interoperable standard and work yep. with IEEE to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. that'll force, you know, enough people will they would do that. I would move to the small manufacturer in a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, Mike, uh, I don't think you'd be the only and, one in higher ed who would. Because uh, as we right. mentioned, we love our standards and we right. can put the standard in all our classrooms. Yep. I mean, Mike, I'm sure you have about 200 classrooms on your campus. Tim, you probably got, so that's 400 right there. 300. Right. Uh, 300. Okay. Well, you know, we're looking at probably between USC uh, and all our universities. You're looking at a good 10k yeah 20k mm -hmm. yeah. yeah easily Easy. and that's easily. the thing like and like like you're saying we've standardized the hardware set because we yeah. know like it's going to be a, an rj45 it's going to be over cat right. cable it's going to it's the protocol right, right. it's yeah that's it, it comes down to soft it is it there it is I well, said but also, it, you know, and there's some it's there's a model for it right because you can now program your Crestron in C sharp and Python and you do your touch oh, panels hold on, hold on, in HTML to five. There's a model okay, to oh. make them go to standards. So okay. let's make them go to standards. First off, that's another thing is 
I'll put my programming hat on here. First yeah. off, HTML <laughs> is not coding. It is not a coding language. It's a markup. You cannot put <laughs> HTML into coding. It is a whole different set of uh, parameters. James is drawing the line. Also, the whole Crestron <laughs> C Sharp is not true C Sharp. It is Crestron spin on C It's a ba bastardized version, if we can yeah, use that. It language. is. And but they're moving that way to any two. The point is, Are the they movement really? to they the really movement to standard way? things is on its way. They're gonna, they'll either move that way or Lord. they'll die from it, right? Well, so it's only been die. twenty years. How long does this journey take, Lord? We're, I mean, it, are we gonna how be using it to follow the to get rid of VGA? Oh, it, is wait, it wait, gone? How old is, how old is, old is VGA? Is still around. Tim, I had to yell at somebody this year. I was like, he was like, no, I need VGA on that wall plate. I was like, oh, no, you do not. That is not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just, See? and he was I'm younger still, guy, so I could bully yeah. him. But no, I'm I, still I like no. three years. <laughs> I'm still three years away from fully phasing out VGA. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm probably based four on years away at least. Yeah, three and or four was, years to, yeah. I learned of the analog sunset in 2011 and it had already been around for like a decade. So I get it. We're, we're, we're slow. We, we're creatures That's of habit. Okay, so there you go, Michelle. So why why are we slow? Why are we creatures of habit? And we don't- For being so smart. Because this is a very <laughs> bright in, industry, right? If, we deal with it, active no. electronics. Is it comfortability? If, yeah. Change versus comfort. If the, if mm -hmm. AV got the same budget as IT, yeah, everything would move at the same speed as IT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, think that. So, uh, yeah, I think if it's, it's the you same. Want me to give you the answer to that? I think it's people I know and I are comfortable with what they have, so they'll just keep pushing it instead of mm -hmm. thinking about right. and they you know, don't, outside of the, the box. People don't see they don't see the value in reinvesting into their AV hardware, so they're not spending the sort sort of dollars because yeah, every three years my PC gets out of date, so I have to get a new one. So when that, every three years, every three years, I'm not replacing a monitor. Every three years, I'm not replacing a projector. I will say, or sometimes you, you're just in love with something. Because I did hold on to my Windows XP CPU for a really long time. And then once I tried Windows 8 and lost a whole quarter of productivity, I was like, that's why I held on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, you know, because sometimes if it's not broken, like, yay, we'll just keep you. But they also, Nancy, don't build stuff like they used to, right? Because in the ye olden days, you know, microwave was 5,000 pounds and we were we were gifted it was like a legacy passed down from my grandparents it had a a cook a defrost button and a knob for the minutes right and that yeah. sucker lasted for 30 years i kid you not <laughs> i mean like whose yeah. who's microwaves last that long it's so i finally got rid of my fridge in 20 uh seven no uh 2018 was it my still working came, my fridge came from canada from so was it still working yep perfect everything we never get rid of fridge nancy they go to the garage yeah, they we go to the never garage. we never dispose of a refrigeration device fridge. it's it's yeah. like forbidden yeah. it's okay microwave, we love my you. microwave is 1998 so i wow. they work and uh, that's i think what you said of being a creature of habit is if if it's working yeah. why just keep going and going so the thing is tim does have a good point that the it has a bunch but yeah. really, this is where I was going with our happy hour the other day, Ryan. Uh -huh. Let's go. IT has branded itself as critical in society's life. I mean, you, you look at it, when the internet goes down on the East Coast or the West Coast, people lose their freaking mind. If Facebook goes down, if Twitter goes down, people are losing uh -huh. it. But, you know... If there's a blimp in the AV for a little bit, they're going to move on. They're not going to deal because IT has said, you need us. This is Mr. Critical to your life. You have to be always connected and on our uh, things and getting that information. And that's why IT is getting the budget, is yes. ruling the world and mm -hmm. doing everything. I mean, mm -hmm. Ryan, to go off of one, one thing you uh, said um, on the happy hour is, you are correct that what IT does is not hard, but I want to preference that with, because I actually said, I said that about everything I do. Nothing I do is hard. In fact, mm -hmm. everything I do, I, I don't even know why I do it because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. 
But anyway, um, I had a boss a couple of years ago who gave me the best advice when I told him that, like, he, he, I told him, I'm like, look, nothing I do is hard. And he looked at me and goes, it may not be hard to you, but it might be hard to someone else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just because you can do it easy doesn't mean someone else can. And that's the same thing. Yes, IT is not hard. AV is not hard if you know what you're doing. Fair point. But the I like so, you know, James and I went round and round. That was good. But they're like, yeah. so there are four people on this call that are in AV in some in higher ed institution, right? Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. many of them fall under the when we say we fall under the IT department. Right. Do networking people, do systems admins, do endpoint administrators say they fall under IT or do they say I am IT? And ask yourself that question. If you say, say, I don't fall under IT, but I am part of RT, who's the the first R1 that's got a CIO that came up through AV? Yeah. That Ah. takes over because all CIOs came up through somewhere. Sure. So yeah. I realize I'm at an institution that's smaller and easier. The reason mm-hmm. I'm recruiting two managers is because I'm now the assistant director of IT. I'm the deputy CIO of my institution. I am mm-hmm. pulling IT, traditional IT apart well, departments deputy. under me. Let's me go. Up. Because the, the, uh, the alternative is AV people. And this is why I love AV people. We understand user experience yeah. and mm-hmm. the, then there are a lot of IT people that work behind and many are great, many are wonderful, but they work behind closed doors. So my challenge is this, and, and Greg, I come from higher ed, so it's an easy environment for us to talk about this in, but mm-hmm. when yeah. are we going to say we don't fall under them, we are them. Right. And I've been saying we, that from day one. Let's well, go. I've heard James say Let's that for at least well, four or five years. Yeah. What, what you I know when myself? we get the budget they get, when we get to say who the budget goes See, to. See, and but here's yeah. so here's the thing. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna throw this out here because this is where my boss's logic comes in. So we don't okay. we are not under IT. We are we report into the chancellor, actually. Yeah. So uh-huh. it's uh, it's uh-huh. it's my boss, the vice chancellor, chancellor. There's no mm-hmm. IT in between at all which is great because it's given us flexibility on the decisions we've made and the things that we do. Now the unfortunate Autonomy. part is, right. But the unfortunate part is, yes, the budget is not there. So, yeah. the, mm. the, I mean, it's there, but it's not like, you know, if we were under, if we were under IT, then maybe, you know, we would probably get better budget, but the, there would be constraints to that. So they keep in mind, so I'll, and I'll stop. With great I money comes, so, yeah. with great, great money responsibility. Comes great, well, great constraints. <laughs> yeah. So I I have two budgets under me and one is pro, in our world program 20. That's mm-hmm. instructional. One's program 30. That's institutional. Right. Okay. And I have both. So I, while we in, as individuals report through it and in the administration, yeah, my instructional budget is actually the provost's budget that I spend on those oh. things. And so that the, the word Tim just used was autonomy, right? right. That's the key with what you're trying to build is the autonomy to know that we know what we're doing. We're doing the right thing and we can live in both of those worlds. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. And I apologize <laughs> for, but this is something I, I take really seriously. I was you know? on the edge yeah. of my seat. Ryan and is stealing the show tonight with his- I'm not sure to do that. that. I, like, no, 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 no. I meant like, I meant- It's because James too. baited me into it. He said, we were talking about this on the happy hour James and does we, bait you by the way and boy yeah, was my goal. grills you in <laughs> hook, line, and sinker for the record time. when i grow up i want to be james and there's yeah. no doubt about it because i want to be, be like right well that, so you know, that, like, that, that, that's you my dream folks. job is nancy but, has a question y'all. Yeah, my right. question for you folks is you just talked about the user experience and that's what i want to know so in your institutions do you actually let the profs and whomever would be using them play with the systems to see, okay, what are they thinking? How would they use it versus how you think they should use it? Yeah, no, we you definitely, be, oh. I was just saying the best, okay, the best example, uh, yes, I do that, Nancy. I, I do okay. work with our true end users, but the best example I've heard of this, and this is not to pat him on the back, but it was what Joe Way did with theirs. 
Because Who? if you actually never heard ju- of the guy, yeah, I never heard yeah. of that what guy. That guy. But yeah, if you whatever. listen to what Man. he mentioned this a couple of times is he sat down and he had the faculty come in and he's like, take me through your class. And he's mm-hmm. like, all right, we come in and we start our class. So they don't have a power on and power off button. They have a start class and class button mm-hmm. because that's what the faculty How they think. No, yeah, they think. And that's is probably the best example of it I've heard. Do any of you well? And so we actually just went through this process with our faculty because we're ready to refresh our active learning spaces, and that's why we're that's why we're pull that's why we're questioning them, and that's also why I'm looking for a o, over IP solution of some sort um, because we don't they don't make twenty four by twenty four matrix switchers anymore. Uh, I have but, a question. Uh, Do any of y'all work with instructional technologists? Oh yeah. So yes, yep. that, yes. that has yeah, been our... I, that. That's an experience I've only had in the last four years. It was pre-COVID, thank God. Um, <laughs> very transformative. A much better outcome having that person run point yeah. with their subject matter expertness and their desire for a you know a good outcome that will enhance student adoption and mm-hmm. learning and yeah a, a very much a disney experience if you will mm-hmm. uh and it's very rare and now now like the colleges that don't have that i'm like y'all need to get that yeah. uh, you know just one it just one it will when i went well. back for my master's degree i did it in it, what was called instructional technology it's an instructional design path yeah. and brought that into it so when we talk with those people like do you want to talk about the research around pedagogy pedagogy yes. or with adults it's adragogy right Adra- like yes we we it and av people need to have that knowledge bring it in and don't don't let other people tell us things that we don't already know right yep. so i we, mean we I've actually done were, we did times. And right i've done that work with faculties and even to show you why that is so important is I forget what school it is, but there's another school. I've, I've said this uh, before is when they put new buildings on their campus, the first year, they don't put any sidewalks in of that new building because they want to see how the students walk. And then the second year they find the path that the oh, students that's take smart. and, and then they put in. the sidewalks. Yeah, the grass is already and, dead. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, you so, save some money. I mean, so listen to your true end users, and that was part of my wish list. If you read my higher ed, there article, you go. And there's the shameless plug, and that's how you do it, Ryan. So, you know, yeah, yes, I've surveyed our faculty, and one of the questions I asked was if we could flip the script, because right now they have to come into whatever technology is there, right. and they have to adjust their teaching method to the technology that's there. Uh-huh. So, the, one of the questions I asked was if we could flip that script. And we could provide the technology that matches the way you want to teach. What would that be, right? Because that is ultimately the end goal: is the the how the instructor wants to teach should drive the technology decision, and not the other way around. And I mean, I'll admit we got a long way to go with that in Iowa State. We're kind of in the early stages, but we are really trying to get there. So, I mean, the that's process. a great way to look at it. Because I yeah. always say my the classroom technology should just be a tool for the uh, professors in education. It mm-hmm. should not to take the education. It's just a tool that they can use. Absolutely. So, uh, all right, Nancy, I will we'll, because we're getting like towards uh, the end of our time here. Uh, so let's uh, <laughs> get off the rails. <laughs> we got a little. But that's that's how we are here on the AV Life. I'm not. I'm welcome not, to the Christmas party. So, exactly. Woo! <laughs> yeah. So Nancy, I don't think you gave us your wish list. So it, you know, and I know you were putting some things in the yes. chat, but we'll, we'll still hear it. Let's still hear it. I'm just the, you know, the the casual because for me working with consultants is I had all these meetings set up and then COVID hit. And then it's been, you know, trying to do Zooms, trying to do this and that. And then when I started last winter, started getting back out on the road again. And so my my 2023 is just setting up and being able to be there face to face, talking to them, establishing relationships. But you know what? It's 50 50. 
Um, and yeah. if you work with consultants, mm -hmm. Renee and Michelle is some are working from home. Some, some yep. are, I mean, when I, when I was in Denver, I was more or less doing breakfast, lunch, dinner, yep. appetizers and drinks. I didn't want to see any more food because I was so, oh, yeah, full of it. But that's, you know, from my position of what I'm doing is, okay, I got to start making, seeing, doing meetings, you know, and maybe even it, uh, I was thinking about this, doing like consultant mixers and things like yeah. having it in a, you know, more of a casual mm -hmm. atmosphere, bringing whole bunch into one area. And then that way, you know, you get to meet and greet and establish relationships. Nancy, are you a national consultant liaison for global. Williams? Oh, global, <laughs> even better. I have a, that got you that trip to Barcelona, young lady. Um, yeah, that's interesting. You know, we used to locally, just here in Houston, um, we used to put together an event that we called Avent, just so we could all get together and vent. Um, and this is long before COVID, but we would invite like everyone in the kitchen sink. I think at the time I might have been working for Utelogy. Uh, so I'm selling like software, ABRP, it's the next thing. Please believe me. It's only been around a decade, whatever. Um, you slow on the uptake people, don't want to hear it. But we would have the consultants, we would have end users, we would have general contractors, we would have integrate, we we would have distributors, we invited everybody. We were like, come on, yeah. let's all get together and bitch about what you hate about AB and try and solve all the problems over drinks and food. And it was a blast. And I do think consultants love that. Phillips, uh, no, Panasonic did a really successful consultant event in New Orleans during Mardi Gras. Now I'm from Louisiana, so we're like, why would you do it during Mardi Gras? That's the worst time ever. It's so crowded. But of course, I'm not thinking because it's a tourist city, Michelle, and a lot of people would love to go to Mardi Gras. They haven't gone their whole lives. Yeah. And the yeah, consultants loved it. It was incredible. It, it got them a lot of traction. That was probably like nine, 10 years ago. Uh, but no, I do think that putting together those types of events is a great idea. Yeah, thanks. That's great information. Think of, think of budgets too. If we're going to go into any sort of a recession at all, whether we do or don't, if you had one conglomerate, and even if people came and went throughout the day, but you had one, right. probably more well, beneficial for your company than you going here and you going here and you going, and, and I'm, and I'm doing the same where I've got to think of some more creative ways to get together at with everybody in it not costing I I, I would I would all be for regional events honestly I love regional I, events I, I, it's I already go back to go back to the region it's it's already happening for me and I think it's going to be bigger in 2023 that's I, it, hope, it, well, I would well, hope so you know, so I like got it. to see um Dan Farisi uh at Cedia I went to my first Cedia y'all um <laughs> and yeah, it was fun like so so yeah. So, yeah. so, so those events work out great, except for somebody like me who lives in rural Iowa or somebody like, right. um, you know, Donovan Monday, who lives up in the mountains mm -hmm. in West Virginia. Um, you know, for us, so those regional micro. shows are just as hard to get to as a national show. And then I get more value out of a national show anyway. So, oh. yeah. Oh, that's so micro okay. regional. <laughs> Good well, let me let me bring you up something. It's when you're sleeping and then you get all these thoughts as a manufacturer. Is it really worthwhile spending all that money on a show such as Infocom? What what key uh, what key quality leads are you getting? Because like I'd hear from my company, oh, we got forty seven leads. I'm like, no, let's step back. Right. What you did is you took a scan <laughs> mm -hmm. of everybody that came on to your booth, but how many of those would actually be buying the product? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and there's so many things that go into it. Mich you know, well, Michelle and Renee, because yep. we've been in the industry for a while. And we were rep from it's, girls before. So yeah. we used to have a portfolio of manufacturers that we had to book appointments for. Look at Extron. You know, yep. they pulled out like, oh, and that was the big thing. Like, oh, Extron pulled out. Oh my gosh, how can they? And they haven't been. It's not hurting their business. What's interesting is they pulled out in the U.S., but they didn't pull out globally. So that was a little bit of a play faker in my mind. You know, let's be honest. Um, mm -hmm. I wonder, Nancy, because it does. Extron is, is an amazing product, right? Um, I'm, yeah, I, I give full respect to the Trons um, as much as I talk crap about them um, because I can. But um, 
Also, I feel like if you don't participate, you know what I mean? Like, because I, re- I was upset that your AMX didn't have a booth. I was like, oh my God, that's so sad. Oh, yeah. How could AMX yeah. not have yeah. a booth? They, had, they, they, had, a, they had a uh, suite off of um, the. Yeah, Mexican Whisper Mexican Suite. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, a, we'll show up. A, yeah. Mike, Mike can't go to big shows. He can only go to big shows. There are no regional shows in Iowa, folks. So can everyone show up <laughs> so Mike can evaluate your product and determine if you're going to be on the University of Iowa campus? Young yeah, but ladies and what gentlemen. I would what I would say is like, you know, Mike's and I Iowa, like I'm a pretty small place, but there's right. a difference for me who people who have shown up where we are to yeah. our campus. And I could read you the names of people. You'd be like, that person took the time to go yes. all the way to you. Uh, or even if it's on Zoom, they start with a question and they ask questions to understand if you launch into a slide deck and you treat me as a customer who doesn't know the difference between, you know, don't right. read me text specs. Oh, we know. So the answer, I totally agree. Stop. Nancy, like yeah. I go to know your comps, audience. I don't have, I, yes. even me, I don't have time to find a new person I've never met before. Right. We're booked, oh no. It's we're on the run. Yeah. We're on the hustle. And those small events, one of the first wins we did after uh, COVID was Rocky Mountain AVX, which was in Denver. Yes, I was there uh-huh. in uh, I know. the first one. Yeah. And there were very, like, it was small, it was intimate, but we had real conversations with people yeah. that one, we hadn't seen in a while. And two, you funny. had the time to do it. And there wasn't a bigger fish behind me that was more <laughs> that they valuable were like, than I was. Joe Way with USC's here. Could you please move out of the way? Let's clarify <laughs> what value he has or doesn't. You know what I'm saying? What, what and, if you, and if you're looking to have meaningful conversations with other people, as a part of the higher ed uh, yep. envelope or the bubble, as it were, or, you know, make sure you sign up for the Hetma conference coming up in February. Uh, we oh, where's that going to be? Our, uh, where's virtual. Oh, virtual. Yeah, virtual. Online. Virtual. Online. Online before they were virtual it was cool. Before virtual was cool. Yeah, hey, I love virtual it. before it was cool. Yeah. Exactly. It. So we're it's still an doing important it. point. Like, yeah. Hetma is virtual and was virtual for is cool because it needed to be accessible to mm-hmm. everyone. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so many people can't travel or they don't have the budget or whatever. They don't have that the, the main the thing point. is the budget. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's free. It's, it's free. free. 100% free. And it's easy. Come on. Yeah. Didn't every, I thank you. Cause that's, also, that's a price everyone can afford. Another free. Exactly. Is that, um, I think Hetma is working on some ISD. Oh, yeah. We are. There's yes. some ISC. Oh, yeah. ISC. Yeah. Uh, are we taking over uh, Oxford, y'all? What's going I will, uh, on? Uh, I will be at there, ISC as a. I will be at ISC. The, oh, actually, we're going to be there as a part of Higher Ed AV Media, actually. Um, nice. As much as a press group as anything else right oh, so. beautiful. i've been i've been as a member of the press as I've, I've seen nancy there before because she always does oh it. yeah well, back when it was yeah, in michelle, amsterdam which we love michelle loved, has so. reported yeah. michelle has reported for us in the past and that's right here yes the, yeah. i was the correspondent it was hilarious no, yeah, it's cool was like awesome. higher ed av is sending fa- a team of five people yeah. to cover that's that show. so great y'all are yeah. gonna yeah. y'all have never been no i've never been no you're gonna right, love my it. Answer, my last answer, my real answer for my wish list is: I would like to go yeah. to an ISD someday. And oh my god, you have gotta go! <laughs> no, it's, it is. My, it's, it's so much wish. fun. It's on my list too. So it's just like anything when you travel internationally; it really expands your horizons. It opens up your mm. mind. It just you start looking at things from a different perspective. It's very rewarding. I highly recommend. Well, but like yeah. if I can't go to an infocom, I can use points and take PTO and sneak to Vegas or sneak to yeah. Orlando. Right. I looked at the trips to Barcelona and I think that cheapest was like $1,400. I'm like, oh, yeah, no. I, know. I booked, I but booked I my, Korea, so I booked to Barcelona and it was cheaper for me to fly to Barcelona than I paid to go to the ETC CCUMC conference in Orlando this year. Really? Wow. That's that's fascinating. It's waited too long to look or something because mine was. I don't know. It's doable. Yeah. But like it's like $800 a ticket for me. That's about what I was. Yeah. That's not that's bad at all. Cool. No, that's I was like yeah. 20 something to get to Barcelona mm-hmm. from Arizona. Like it's really cool. Bad. The next time I'll see Mike Peterson in person is in Espana. 
Yeah. Well, I, I was gonna say, you, you all remember that it took me and James going to Orlando to meet the first time and <laughs> yes. we were in the same yeah. state. Uh, He's two, two hours down the road. Right? And, yeah. Yeah. First time I met James King was down at Infocom 21 in Orlando. <laughs> I remember that. And, I remember that. Uh, both and that was the first time the we time. met in real life was yes, Infocom I met 21. A lot of, I met a lot of my, uh, yes. my AV Life folks for the first time there. Mine um, was this I'm looking year, forward. 22 for a lot of people. For me, because I didn't get to go to Orlando. Yep, you, oh, that's yeah, right. right. Mm-hmm. No, you didn't. Oh no. my god, the Sharp NEC booth at 2020 Infocom was hilarious. Oh my god, because it was it was just a booth, but they were like, But we're still here, y'all. So that's all that matters. <laughs> and I will say, much <laughs> to his to no, but much to his point about when it's a smaller show or whatever, that was perfect because I brought a bunch of end users with me and um so having 10,000, sub 10,000 attendees was not like so overwhelming, like when mm. the full show is there in force. That and, was, that and was people great. had yeah. plenty of time to talk and everybody was so excited mm. to see everybody. Yeah, it was, that was, I was so glad that I went, um, that I went on my own nickel, but it was worth every penny. So, well, yeah, and we're all looking forward to Infocom, uh, <laughs> this next time around, um, Mike, I still want to do your thing. You've been okay. you've been teasing me here on it. So yeah, Mike yeah. has a special trip down memory memory lane for us. So let's see if it's gonna work. Uh okay. so go ahead, share. All let's right. See what happens here. All right. Can you see my screen? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. All right. So um I attended a small college uh in uh, Massachusetts called MIT for <laughs> mm-hmm. a small, just a small, small place. Yeah. Small school. Familiar. But uh so you were one of them to, smart this, kids. This goes back to the uh, conversation about how twenty-year-olds don't have good decision-making skills. So, <laughs> so this this is a part of that as well. So, uh, we were tasked to go get the Christmas tree for our fraternity house. Uh, it's a four-story brownstone, so it's got a three-story interior stairwell, you know, vertical uh, wow. up through that whole area. And so, and 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 you know, they were all saying, "Well, you know, you guys aren't going to do it right if we can't touch the top of the tree from the top level." Um, and so we're like, all right, we took him serious about it, right? And so off we go to go uh, buy a tree. And I'll keep the story short because it could get really long. And, but, <laughs> but basically, you know, we had this rental station wagon and we hoofed this uh, tree on top of the station wagon, 30 foot long or 30 foot high tree. That's awesome. And um, the front of the tree, like the front of, we put the, uh, trunk forward and it was about even with the front of the hood and the back of the tree was just about you know touching the ground as it uh <laughs> as it fell off the back side of the station wagon we had to cut some branches out of the way so that the driver actually had a place to see um out the front um and we got it up there and then we all we decided how are we going to get in after we got up there and all the branches went poof over the over the over the edges of the, of the uh of the doors we're like uh how do we get in now uh so we found our way to get into the car we started heading back to uh to boston and it wasn't very long we, you know we were on us 20 and before long there's a police officer behind us you know and they pulled us over we had a conversation well um they sent some of them to the, to the police station to go have a conversation about this but uh you know one of the other uh pledges and i stayed back before long this reporter shows up and she says i had to come see this i heard it on you know the scanner <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this tree on Highway 20. Like, that's what that's she heard awesome. on the scanner right so oh that's brilliant the police officer couldn't oh tell what kind of God. car it was he's like we're pulling over a christmas tree on highway 20. <laughs> 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 That is no, no. amazing. Well, there love- you go. So that, 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 that's my memory. So. What I like so is that I've the- now seen you for the first time without a beard and mustache um, back in 1989. Yeah, yeah. I love the quote. The cops were really, really cool there. They thought it was kind of funny. That was yeah, a direct they, quote. They did, actually. In the Marlboro Enterprise by Mr. Mike Peterson. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know, Mike. So, you so for good, anybody, my man. <laughs> So for anybody who is uh, listening to us uh, and not watching us, go over to YouTube because uh, they wow. that's the only place you're going to see this. Uh, yeah. And while you're there, like and subscribe uh, to uh, the AV Life for for op- updates. Uh, you could also go to higheredav.com to go see this as well because we do put the YouTube so video there as well. 
Um, and if you're going out this weekend to go get your Christmas tree, because I'm releasing this early, uh, be safe and don't pick <laughs> one that's too big for your church, your car. So unless call you're driving Mike, a limousine. Call Mike for advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call, reach out to Mike Peterson. Call, call your tree. Do. Peterson's got the fun tree pack. Secure oh, no, we, tip. We, yeah, we can tell exactly how to get a tree that size onto a, a station wagon and, and secure it. So I'm not going to answer some, any questions that way. So is that questionable part, engineering is that, for MIT students there, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Again, it, is that, it, it, it's back to the, the, the brain's not developed in a 20 year old. It, it no, goes back to that. exactly. So. All those great decisions we made. <laughs> oh. All yes. right. Well, on that note, thank you, you very know. much, Mike. Thank you very much, Ryan. Thank you so very much, Michelle, as well. Thanks uh, for having me. Oh, we always a pleasure having you all to, on the show. And for your first time, Ryan, thank you for for joining us. And it, you. You, it looked like you, you had a good proud. time. So, yeah. yes, awesome. you, made, you did. He's a natural. He did. He's a natural. I love talking to AV. I can go anywhere and do it. He's trying, so, he trying to move it. up no, no, no. from friend of the show to IT. cast member. I'm just letting you all know. You love talking yeah. IT. AV is oh hey. never mind. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a, that's a, that's a topic for another another show. So hang on. Take yeah. over and James <laughs> James is James is here to to to, to participate. That's James's section. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nancy Renee, thank you so very much. Uh, and you know, as we wrap up this year, I'm thankful for all of you. Um, you know, guests and crew and all of our listeners as well. Um, we all wish you a very happy and healthy and safe holiday season. Um. Catch us back in January uh, and uh, until our next adventure.